we will continue what we have learned in chapter 1. Okay, so next we will learn about what is wavelength. Last video, we have learned about frequency spectrum. And the frequency spectrum is actually related to the wavelength. Uh, the, the wavelength is actually the distance between peaks, the high points on the waveform. Okay, so we have what we call as waveform over here. Okay, and the wavelength should be what is the distance between one peak to another peak. Okay, so this uh, distance is what we call as wavelength. And to know what is the wavelength, we can use this equation whereby we use the symbol of lambda to represent the wavelength. All right, and then we use the frequency of the 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 um the signal or the wavelength, okay, and by using a constant from the velocity of light. Maybe you cannot see here, all right, but inside my notes I mentioned that this uh, velocity of light is actually has the value of three times ten power of eight meter per second. All right, so this value is fixed in order for us to know what is the wavelength when we have a certain frequency of a signal. Okay, so for <clears throat> when we have a higher frequency, uh, basically we will have a shorter wavelength. Why? Because in uh, low in low frequency, okay the period or the time taken in for, for this one cycle to be uh, complete is we always have a T and frequency always use the part 1 over T to find the frequency of a signal. So when we have a shorter period of time, we will get the low frequency. But when we have a longer period of time, so it will give us high frequency as well as longer wavelength. All right. So this will be the spectrum of wavelength uh, where we have the what we call as visible light over here. This is the colors of rainbows, I would say. Okay. And uh, the rest of it, we may not, uh, we may not see the, the, the colors, but it has uh, the wavelength of each uh, frequency. Okay, so next is about bandwidth and information capacity. I mentioned, I think, in the first video about bandwidth uh, and and how it related to the performance of communication system that we want to produce or develop. So the bandwidth basically, uh, we where we can find it based on the differences of the highest and lowest frequency that contain inside the information signal. Okay, so how how much of the, the information contained in that bandwidth is what we call as information capacity. Alright, uh, so the bandwidth basically we can take the highest and uh, minus two with the lowest frequency of the signal. But for the information capacity, we cannot have any uh, calculation based on the properties of the signal, but we can find it based on the bandwidth as well as the transmission time taken for the information to be delivered or transmitted. So the Hartley in 1920, exactly 20, uh, 100 years ago, has come out with this uh, relationship whereby when the information capacity is actually uh, direct proportionate with the system bandwidth. If the bandwidth is high, so the information capacity will be higher as well. And it will take more transmission time, right? And based on this info, uh, relationship, Shannon here uh, is actually a mathematical mathematician uh, try to come up with an equation, mathematical equation that relate uh, to this relationship by the Hartley. Okay, so I equal B uh, log, log 2, 1 plus uh, signal to noise ratio. So by having this information, basically we know how much is the information capacity can be uh, put onto the bandwidth. Okay, so next is about noise. 
this actually noise is the most important part when we uh, discuss about any systems uh, how noise can interrupt or interfere the uh, capability of the system to be uh, work to work okay so we as as uh, general noise is actually actually a signal that we don't want it to be in our system or what we call as unwanted signal and it can be uh, a random signal that come or interfere our communication system and most of the time the random signal uh, cannot be represented with a simple equation it, it always change uh, through time okay so the existence of noise will degrade the degrade means make the level of the quality signal will be uh, low or, or bad okay so in order for us to know how much the noise has interrupted our system we need to do some analysis so the noise analysis here is how we can find uh, how much the amount of noise is on our system so uh, if we we have a signal without noise we will have very nice line uh, on the maybe our oscilloscope but if we have noise we have this kind of zigzag uh, uh, line that actually interrupt and we don't know what is the uh, correct signal to be uh, to be on our system okay so the type of noise can be divided into several what we call at, uh, into two actually correlated and also uncorrelated noise uh, and under uncorrelated noise, we have another two category, what we call as internal noise and also external noise. So first, I want to explain about correlated noise. So if the correlated noise, it means that the signal will be, uh, sorry, the, the noise is actually uh, uh, what it, uh, present because of the signal inside the system or circuit. Okay, so it's actually uh, correlated to the signal inside the system okay and the correlated noise will not be there if there is no any signal inside the circuit or system okay so the uh, the example of correlated noise is what we call as harmonics distortion in an intermodulation distortion i will explain about these two uh, type of noise uh, later on okay all right, but for uncorrelated noise, uh, this noise actually present in the system or the circuit uh, regardless either we have the signal, the input signal or not. If we don't have any signal inside the system, the noise is still there, okay? Still can be uh, found in the system or circuit, okay? So for the uncorrelated noise, it can be uh, generated either internally internally means inside the circuit or externally externally means uh, it's not inside the circuit it's outside the circuit and it will interfere whatever we have in the circuit in the system okay so internal noise maybe because of the uh, electronic uh, electrons inside the circuit that come from uh, uh, it can be from the temperature itself and make when the temperature is high, the electron inside the circuit become um, hot and move uh, quite uh, high. So it will come out as a thermal noise or short noise or transit time noise. For the external noise, it can be, um, or it can be uh, present either from natural resources such as uh, lightning, uh, or maybe from main make noise such as uh, ignition, crosstalk, maybe the aircon sound, uh, or any, or maybe from the fan. Uh, as long as it actually came from external or outside the circuit or system. Okay, this is. Uh, I want to explain about correlated noise. Okay, so for correlated noise. Uh, I, I explained to you that we have this type, these two example, what we call as harmonics. Second is what we call as intermodulation uh, distortion. Okay, so on this part, 
uh, on the A part is actually how the harmonic distortion generated from the circuit. So we have what we call as input signal here and we have only, okay, this is actually the frequency uh, domain uh, graph. Okay, so when we have only one input signal, we will find only one uh, spectrum on, one peak on the spectrum. But at the output, we will find, we will find uh, se some several peaks at the output signal. So where does these other peaks came from? So that is what we call as correlated noise. So the V1 might, might be remain as the output, uh, but we have the V2, V3, and V4. Right. So this V2, V3, and V4 is what we call as harmonics. And the frequency, okay, I try to find it again. Uh, the frequency of V2, V3, and V4 basically is the multiplication of the frequency from the input signal. Okay, that is for the harmonics. For the intermodulation distortion, we need several uh signals in the uh, at the output uh, sorry at the input so for this example we we put two signals with different frequency in the uh, as an input and the output will come out as uh that two signal plus other signals as well uh, uh, yes other frequency as well okay so the v1 and v2 will have Se uh, separate frequency but for the intermodulation distortion these two frequency will be added and also subtract to get to to generate other either other frequency on the output spectrum so this is these two additional frequency is what we call as intermodulation distortion okay um, actually, I provide this example inside Kalam for you to try and understand better what is harmonics uh, and also how to uh, uh, calculate the total harmonic distortion on a signal. Okay, and second example is more on how you can find what is the intermodulation frequency when we have uh, two or more. Uh, for this example, I only I, I, I only give two signal and how we can find the cross product frequency of uh, from that signal. Okay, for your information, the cross product means this the um the what call it the the summation and also subtraction of the frequency. So this is what we call as cross product. Okay, so I think that's it for this video. Uh, see you on the next video. Thank you.